Welcome back to the Algarve. I've had my Speed Twin for two months now, and yet I'm still not tempted to sell it. Regular viewers will know this is almost a record, but the bike is just so good. It hits so many sweet spots, and there's nothing on the current market that I'd rather have, so I'm not looking at alternatives. Okay, I confess, I was ever so slightly tempted by the beautiful blonde at the bar that is the new Ducati Street Fighter V2, and I do intend giving it a test ride next month, but from what I've read and heard, it would seem that it needs revving hard to get to the power, something I just don't have to do with my bike, and it does seem pretty expensive for what it offers. More likely as a candidate for my next bike is the Triumph Speed Twin RS. Only slight problem is that it doesn't actually exist, and I somehow doubt it ever will. There's no harm in dreaming, however, so here's a rundown of what I'd love to see. Improvements that would turn the Speed Twin from a very good bike into a truly great one, at least for me. So Triumph, if you're watching... Let's break with tradition and start round the back, shall we? How about a fatter tyre? Now, it doesn't need one dynamically, of course. Wider rubber would only increase unsprung mass and hamper turning. It would also require a, rider, a wider rim, redesigned swing arm, and everything that goes with that. But this is a wish list. What I would do if I had some kind of magic wand. And I think a nice fat 190 section tyre would look great sitting between the twin bazooka style exhausts. I'll keep the Metzler Racetech RR tyres though. Maybe not the best in the wet, but they're perfect down here for me on the warm tarmac of southern Europe. The oft decried boring Triumph colour scheme. Now, going on what I saw at the ITMA show, traditionally conservative manufacturers seem at last to be offering a more eclectic range of colours. So a handful of brighter paint schemes for an RS would be nice. Triumph tried to spruce up the grey on my bike with that weird yellow stripe under the tank logo, but it's the wrong hue, a sort of high-vis yellow, and just looks wrong. I've covered mine up, as you can see, with some brushed aluminium vinyl, but the whole bike now looks a bit too monochromatic. I've put some subtle yellow, the right hue this time, stickers on the rims and a gold chain to avoid it looking too much like a black and white photo, but a nice dash of colour on the tank would be great. Better rear suspension? The standard shocks just about do the job dynamically, as long as you're not pushing on too hard, but they're a bit basic, worse than those on the Royal Enfield Interceptor I tried in the last video, for example, look cheap and don't offer much in the way of adjustment. The very first mod I did to my bike was a pair of YSS shocks, so come on Triumph, some nice Olins or Nitrons on the back wouldn't be too much to ask for the RS. In the same vein, how about some semi-active Olins front forks? The Marzocchi's on the 2022 facelifted bike are noticeably better than those on the old bike and make the new model feel a lot more nimble and flickable. But they're non-adjustable and black. A splash of gold would look great. Only a splash mind. Only one component needs to be gold. Some manufacturers, who will remain nameless, seem to have an overzealous bling department at the moment and the results can sometimes look dubious. And while we're on the subject of questionable taste, how about giving us some proper stitching on the seat? Genuine leather or Alcantara would be nice, but I'll take vinyl as long as you get rid of the fake stitches that have just been hot pressed into the material. I mean, what goes on in these meetings? Real stitching looks nicer. Yeah, but it'll cost another three pounds per bike. Oh, in that case, forget it. Customers aren't going to pay an extra three quid. Melt some fake ones into the vinyl, no one will notice. A proper embroidered logo would also be nice. Lesser bikes in the model, modern classic lineup get this, so why not the Speed Twin? Bonnevilles also get double skinned chrome exhaust, which stay chromed. The Speed only gets a single skin, which discolours as soon as the pipes warm up. Probably not helped by Euro 5, as discoloration is often a sign of the engine running lean. The pipes get too hot and push browny purple impurities through the steel to the outside. They can be polished off quite easily, but it returns within five minutes, and so this is pretty much a waste of time. Double skin is the way to go. Some diamond cut rims, like on the Kawasaki Z900RS, would be nice. The painted black rims on the standard Speed Twin are okay, but a bit boring. Cut a simple silver edge into the rims, and they look so much more premium. 
Moving up to the front, now Triumph, there's going to come a time when you're just going to have to bite the bullet and update the clocks, just a little. These analogue dials look great, but the tiny LCD screens are really hard to read on the road. I dare say they've, they've been designed by young graduate engineers with perfect eyesight, but older riders like me find it really difficult to decipher your tiny icons and bars. You don't need to take BMW's route of a full-colour TFT slab, but couldn't you give us a twin-clock semi-retro version of the highly legible clock you designed for the Trident? I'm sure you could do it if you put your mind to it. You could use them on the Rocket as well, because the clock on that is just weird and doesn't suit the bike at all. You gave the facelifted Speed Twin some beefy Brembo M50 calipers, for which, as a lover of overly powerful anchors, I applaud you, but you chickened out at the last minute and put some weedy street pads in them. Yes, they're a definite improvement on the first generation's bike brakes, but please give us some sportier pads on your RS. I've fitted these sintered race pads on my bike and the bite is improved beyond recognition. They now give me the stopping power I had on my Street Triple RS. They're only £100 or so and you could probably buy a job lot for a quarter of that. I mean, can you imagine the discussion at the dealers? Now sir, do you want these super powerful brake pads for an extra £25? Nah, it's okay thanks. I'm dropping 12 k on a new bike, but I'm not spending an extra £25 on decent brakes. Just do it Triumph, we will pay the extra. At least give us the option. While we're on the subject of performance, and this is the big one, how about another 40 or 50 horsepower? Well I did say this was a magic wand wish list. 100 horsepower is of course ample for the road, especially when it's available so low down in the rev range. But using my own test, it's not quite enough. My reasoning is as follows. If you ever find yourself applying full throttle on a bike, or in a car for that matter, then by definition you need more power. Problem is, you get used to the power for the first couple of miles on the 180 horsepower speed triple I, I tried a few months ago. The power seemed completely overwhelming to the point of being unnecessary. But when it was time to return the bike to the dealer, I'd completely got used to it and wanted more. That said, a Speed Twin RS with around 145 horsepower, 150 horsepower, would really appeal to me. And so would a slight weight loss, please Triumph. The bike would feel a bit more alive in the twisties. It's not heavy per se, but riding it back to back the other week with the Trident really showed how much difference 25 kilos makes when you're pushing on. The Speed Twin has got the power in a straight line, but a Trident or a Street Triple has the advantage in the bends. So 10, 15 kilos less weight then. Aesthetic details. How about a full LED headlight? The DRL is a nice crisp white LED, but the headlight is still an ancient old man's teeth yellow halogen. Okay, it looks retro, but try and have modernized the rest of the front so much it seems a shame to have cheaped out on the light, especially when other semi-retro bikes in their lineup, like the Rocket, get the full LED treatment. They've done their best fitting one of those bulbs with a blue tinted glass to increase the temperature a bit, but why not just give us proper 6000 Kelvin LED? I guess next on my wish list would be some space under the seat. Not sure how they'd achieve this on an RS version with even more gadgetry, but I'm struggling to find the space for even a small multi-tool. I don't expect cup holders, but each new bike I buy seems to have even less storage space than the last, and on the Speed Twin there's barely any at all. Keyless. I know opinion is divided on this, but I've had it on a couple of bikes and absolutely love it. So practical, though please try and make sure the fuel cap is linked to the keyless system, otherwise it's pretty much a waste of time. How about a quick shifter on a Speed Twin RS? When I rode my friend's Trident the other week, I remembered how nice these things are. Unnecessary, yes, but so exhilarating when you're pulling out of, say, a roundabout. So I'll have one of those, please, Triumph. A real Monza fuel cap would be wonderful. You know, one that opens the right way and doesn't conceal the cap from my dad's old Ford Cortina under the flap. Fueling. It still needs a bit of tweaking for urban riding triumph. If Euro 5 is holding you back, can't you at least fit some throttle spacers? These two tiny bits of 3D printed plastic cost owners around 40 euros, 
but I'm sure you could mass produce them and install them in the factory for literally pennies. Do it for the RS please. Can you also fit a cruise control or at least offer one as an option? I don't really have the need for one down here in the Algarve, if I'm honest. The roads I ride on don't lend themselves to one, but I know a lot of owners who would like one, and I don't think it can be that difficult to integrate, can it? Final moan, what the hell is this? Who thought a burgundy coloured spark plug cover would be a good idea? It doesn't go with the bike at all. It looks like something from under the bonnet of a 1950s Morris Minor. What were you thinking? Make it black or bright yellow or race red or something. Just don't make it brown. Ugh. Oh, and a 14 litre tank that can hold 20 litres of fuel. That's it, promise. Anything we don't need? How about a six axis IMU, cornering lights, active cruise control, Bluetooth connectivity so we can take phone calls and listen to music instead of enjoying and or concentrating on our ride. A sat nav that tells you whether you're thirsty or not. Now, I had all that nonsense on a BMW I owned a couple of seasons ago. Never use any of it. Now I know what's coming in the comments section. Why don't you build your own Speed Twin RS Rocket Man? Well, the answer is because I don't want to. The Algarve economy is not exactly awash with specialist custom motorcycle shops. And even if it were, the cost of a bespoke bike can spiral to ridiculous levels. And you only get a fraction of it back when it comes time to sell. That and increasingly strict legislation and the risk of ending up with an unsightly mishmash of parts that don't quite work together. No, I'd just rather let the boys at the factory build it. So there you are, Triumph. There's your customer research done for you. You just need to screw all these components together. Oh yes, and if you can make all these improvements for, say, £1,500 more than the standard Speed Twin, we'd be ever so grateful. Anyway, what do you think? Have I forgotten anything? What would you like to see on the Ultimate Modern Classic? Let me know in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching.